Hello and welcome to the Intro to Variables. By the end of this video, you'll have an understanding of how variables are used within Playmaker and Unity. One of the main uses for variables in Playmaker is to let actions talk to each other. Sometimes a set material color action is having a rough day and it could just pick up the phone to call a rotate action, just have a little chat, chew the rag, shoot the breeze. Talking it out can really make all the difference in your day. But also, actions talk to each other by one of them storing information in a variable and the other accessing that information for its own purposes. Let's make a character controller to see how variables can be shared between actions. So let me just delete this. We could start from the top. I'll create a cube, call it player, and create another cube, call this ground, and we'll just take this ground, we'll flatten it out just so we have some sort of reference to work off of. And we'll put it just below our player. So we're gonna put an FSM on our player and we're going to add a get axis vector. We'll store the vector three this action gives us, which by default is based off the input of our WASD and arrow keys. Let's call this vector move V3. So take a look down here really quick. This is your debug box. If you check this, you'll be able to see the current value of your variables. This way we can see how they change in real time to better understand what is happening in our FSM. So go ahead and check that box. If you press play and look down at the action in this little box, you can see the vector three info it's storing as we press our move keys. So now that we are harnessing the powers of the Vector3, let's endow our little cube player with the power of movement. Add a translate action, which is an action that just moves things around. And for the vector, hit the little drop down menu and you'll see the variable we made for the action above. Select that and as the get axis updates this Vector3 variable, this translate action will also have that updated variable. Press play. And now our cube player is under the influence of our every keystroke. Now this multiplier value here is where you can input the speed of movement for the cube. I could set this to whatever I want manually. Like right now, three. That feels pretty good. But as I build up my game and things get more complex, I may find myself digging around just to find this one value. A more organized way of handling this would be to use a variable instead of a hard coded value. So I'll click this little box with an equal sign on it, which is our use variable button. If we click this drop down menu, we can create a new variable. I'll call this cube move speed. And now if we move over to the variables tab, you can see that it has the variables we just created. This example happens to be a float variable and you can see the type listed next to it. Down here, I can enter the value I want it to have. So I'll put in three. If I run the game, you could see that I can move around just fine. And if I wanted to come back and change the speed, I could just go to my variables tab, find the variable, and change the value. I'll change it to 15. Really get this thing flying around. Hit play. And yeah, nice and zippy. Maybe a little too zippy. The thing I love about float numbers is that they're rational numbers, so you can really dial it in here. Maybe set this to 14.9. Let's try that. Oh yeah, perfect, perfect. The other reason you should love variables and ask them to marry you is because they can be referenced from multiple places and changed over time. So for example, say I wanted the cube's move speed to automatically go back down to three after waiting a few seconds. So I'll put a wait action in here and give it a few seconds before sending off to the next state where we'll put a set float value action. And if I click this, you'll see our cube move speed that can now be changed to three. Then I'll have a transition to send back to the first state. So if I press play, 
the cube is nice and fast until it hits the second state where it slows down. So you can imagine building games in which all sorts of things change the player's speed, a single variable being changed under different conditions. So in this video, we learned that variables are containers for values. A float variable like player speed holds a rational number, aka a number with a decimal. We learned that using variables instead of just manually entering values is a more organized way of working. We learned that manually entering values is called hard coding. We learned that changing a variable in one place can change that variable in all other places it exists. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.